Hello, in this tutorial, we'll be rigging our character using the Skeleton 2D component inside of Godot 4.2 and preparing it for animation, which we'll be following up on in the next tutorial. With the Polygons 2D properly arranged, we can begin creating the 2D bone structure for our character. So by selecting the Skeleton 2D node inside of our character body 2D node, we can press Ctrl A and add a bone 2D. This bone will appear at the center of our world, and we can just quickly rename it to Torso. By pressing W, or selecting this gizmo up here, we can left-click and drag to place it wherever we like, and then press E to select the rotation tool and rotate the bone um, in the direction that you want it to face. Over, over here in the inspector, you'll see that you have a property called Auto -cal Calculate Length, which determines the length of the bone automatically, because this bone is going to have child objects, we can leave this turned on. So let's once again press Ctrl A and add bone 2D into our scene. You can see it's added as a child object of the torso and we'll rename this one to head. And then once again, by pressing W, left click and drag and place the bone where you want, to, want it to be. As you can see, the torso bone has deformed so as to, to, adjust, to accommodate the position of the head bone. So let's rotate this one more or less like this. The, the torso bone acts as the parent object for all the other bones in the scene. Therefore, every time I'm adding a new bone, I'm clicking back on to the torso by pressing Ctrl A to add a bone to D and, and naming it to the uh, assigned body part. So this will be arm L corresponding with the polygon that we created before. So again, we lift the drag and rotate matched position. In this case, we can disable the auto calculate length. And here you can see two new properties appears, the bone angle and the length. We'll leave the bone angle as is and stretch out the bone length so that it approximately fits the length of the arm and then just move it slightly. Now we can repeat the process for the other arm. So arm R, arm right, and place it more or less where the arm would be. In this case, since you can't see the arm, I can, for example, disable the torso and then more accurately place this bone uh, in its position. So again, we adjust the length. is fine. And I'll re-enable the torso and then add the legs. So again, we go back to the torso, bone to the create, and rotate. And then one, one other thing that you can do here before, before I show you this, just let's rename it, leg L. So let's, yeah, you can duplicate this, uh, an existing bone by pressing control D. So instead of adding a new one to the scene, you simply press Ctrl D and it duplicates the bone. And this one is named leg R. So let's position it in the correct spot. And for both of these bones, we're just going to leave the uh, auto calculate length on as it's uh, more or less correct. So now that we've set up our skeleton 2D, very sim simple skeleton structure for our character, you'll notice that all of the bones have a yellow exclamation mark uh, displaying an error. And what this error says is that the skeleton currently is lacking a rest pose. And in order to set one, we need to select the skeleton 2D node, the parent node, click on skeleton 2D and press overwrite rest pose. What this does is it sets the current position of the bones as the default position uh, where they'll be located. So this helps once we're creating animations so that whenever you move the bones around, you can always access the default position. Next, we need to assign the skeleton to our polygons. So to do this, we select the polygon and click under the skeleton tab, press assign, and then select the skeleton 2D node. And then we repeat this process for the, the remaining bones. As you may have noticed, assigning the skeleton 2D to the polygons is not enough because moving the bones at the moment does not simultaneously move the 
corresponding polygons. What we must do is assign weights to each polygon vertex, which will determine the extent to which they are affected by the bones. In order to do this, we'll need to assign each of these bones weights to every polygon independently. So let's start with the leg R here and go into the UV editor again. And then over here, you'll be able to see these four options and we want to select bones. You'll see the skeleton in a simplified version, as well as the polygons with the four vertices highlighted in white. Now, what we need to do is sync the bones to polygon, which will create this list of all of our bones on the right hand side, and then select the corresponding bone that we want to affect this specific polygon. At the moment, it's the torso, and as you can see, all the points are highlighted in black, which means they are not, this bone is not affecting the vertices at all. We want to select the leg R bone, and it's, it will be highlighted in white over here. And then over at the top, we can select the impact the brush will have. So we want to press this to, put this to the max. If you decrease it, it'll have the effect. The effect will be lesser, and it's zero. It's nothing. And over here, you've got an eraser as well. So you want to select the bucket over here. The radius impacts the size of the brush, which you can see is this white circle. So if I was to increase this circle will grow and then we just left click on the points as, until they're colored in white and this means that this bone will have impact onto the onto these four vertices so if we go back into our uh, scene view we can select the bone and uh, the leg will rotate now i want to repeat this process for the other body parts so let's go to the arm r here I've already synced the bones to polygon, so R and R, and then make sure that you've got your brush selected and paint on the points. And it's very simple because each bone only controls one object without any joints. If you've got joints, you might have to use uh, some more complex settings using the, the blending of uh, joints. select any of the bones, for example the left arm, press E and then rotate it and the polygon will deform. So let me just show you, if I deform this, move the head, rotate this, maybe we can even move it like that, just to show you the capabilities. Now let's say I would like to reset this and I don't like what I've done because it's a mess. So I go back to the Skeleton 2D, Skeleton 2D, over here at the top and then click Reset to Rest Pose. And you'll see the position goes back to the default and I've lost the progress. However, it goes, it, the position is permanently saved and I can always go back to what, I've, what I like. One other thing I can mention is that at the moment we're able to control every single body part as we like except for the torso. The torso is a parent object of all of the other children, of all the other body parts. So if I were to select the torso bone and scale it, the entire character will scale. But let's say I, would, I, only want, I wish to only scale the torso without affecting any of the other objects. To do this, we'll have to add another bone. So once again, selecting the torso and adding bone to the, which I'm going to name belly. And this belly is not a part of the rest pose, so we, we go back to the skeleton 2D and then override the rest pose. Or actually, this bone needs to be placed first. So now we can override the rest pose. And with that done, we need to go to the torso polygon, press UV, 
Sync bones to polygons so the belly bone appears. And then assign the weights to, to this polygon as well. And now if I select the belly bone, we can squish the belly or move it independently from their other bones without losing the ability to also control the entire character. So now that that's done, the character is completely ready to be animated, which we'll get to in the next video. So for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.